the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 253 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, it's a big day. It's the day we've been uh, waiting for. (laughs) Yeah, well, we we said, uh, you know, if the KFB news were to drop, we'd have an emergency pod. It just so happened to fall right in line with our typical uh, schedule. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll take it. We'll we'll call this an emergency pod, right? But uh, we're gonna we're gonna ba- basically bang out two podcasts in one night. I feel like, with yeah, the, <laughs> with all that's going on. Pretty much. I mean, I, I don't know how much. I mean, there's still plenty to talk about, but I mean, we've been talking about this for so long. Yeah. Though, I mean, probably the least likely avenue is the avenue that they ended up going, which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, James, a month ago, did you think there was any chance that Kyle Busch was gonna go drive for Richard Childress Racing? Well, when, when RCR started getting into the rumor mill, I thought there's, I mean, my first thought was there's no way. Right. And, and Eric, you and I, I mean, Eric, we've been messaging. <laughs> if people could see our, our chats, I mean, you and I have been talking about Kyle Bush at least, what would you say, four to five times a week for oh, the last three months? Easy. And not to mention, you know, the half hour per podcast that we devote to it as well. Yeah, I mean, we we are constantly thinking about Kyle Busch, and, and I'm not kidding you, Eric. When when it started coming down the pipe late last week, that this was really going to happen, I still was pu- <laughs> I still was pushing back. Like, there's no way I was waiting for Kyle happen. to come out on stage today and announce NFTs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pull the old Tony Stewart move yeah. one more time, hey? Right? Yeah. I um I, I you know Eric, I gotta admit. Um, you know, Richard Childress, <laughs> this is an incredible get for this guy because you, you think about, he, he talked Dale Earnhardt into coming to race for him, not once, but twice. Right. He had to get him back. And I don't think a lot of people remember that. That's a lot. That's before our time. Cripe. Um, but to get Kyle Busch in a room and after, you know, beating the crap out of him, <laughs> you know, years ago, but to, to pull this off, what an, in, an incredible win for Richard Childress racing that completely changes the future for them. Well, not it's, only it's just that win. James, but like, what was a, it was a couple months ago that we're like, Holy crap, Richard Childress, what are they going to do? They just lost Tyler Reddick. They just lost mm-hmm. the best driver, the best yep. prospect in NASCAR right now. Yep. And he is able to turn a 180 and, and pick up, somebody that makes Tyler Reddick look like, yeah, get rid of him. You know, yeah. like, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. There's only, I don't know, Eric, I, 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 we don't have to go through the entire list, but you're, you're losing Tyler Reddick and you replace him with what, right? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like a dead duh, draw. It's it, there's nobody out there. Yeah. But if you get a Kyle Larson, a Kyle Bush, you know, those are like, there's like a handful of guys and he got one, he got a legitimate, superstar the only multi-champion currently driving in the series like you know and it it all boils down to i feel like incompetence on the behalf of joe gibbs racing i don't think it's incompetence james i think it is they just there is no loyalty there i think they made one shot at it and when it didn't happen it didn't make business sense and they were done i don't know man the way kyle talked today in some of the interviews afterwards, I mean, he was told that the 18 car wasn't an option for him. I think after, yes, I, I, I think we have to put the timeline in place from that statement because I, I do, I, I saw what you saw too. And, but how do I you think, break down that far? You know what I mean? Like, well, I, you know, Eric, we are so far along in the season that it, there had to be a breaking point at right. some point. Well, right? that's you and I both were saying it, it after you hit a certain point, there's no way he's coming back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, heck we did a podcast, I, you know, I'm not going to check my receipts on this, but we did a podcast maybe five episodes ago, probably less than that. And, and we were saying, where's he going? And I right. said, he's got to end up at Joe Gibbs racing. I don't see another option for Kyle Busch out there. Yeah. You know, if, if he wants to compete at the level he wants to compete at, but you know, Eric, I think one of the things that I, didn't consider and and where i maybe was i had my blinders on a little bit was what kyle bush said today about joe gibbs racing basically kind of shutting him out yeah well you 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 this is 
this is a problem in NASCAR, and it's 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 a motor racing specific problem, where our super our super duper stars are not getting a chance to age gracefully into the primes of their career and and beyond. Right. Um. You look a year ago, we had Brad Keselowski shuffled away, uh, from the two. Now he's ended up in a situation that he's he's probably happy with, um, performance wise, not happy with. Right. Uh. But you have Kyle Busch basically leaving, you know, the best seat in the sport with Joe Gibbs racing. Any of the any of those four seats, any any drivers dying to get that, that's that's the top of the sport. And now he's got to go build something just like Brad Keselowski. And and I think that's the part of me that is, I guess, disappointed in the business system that we have in place, because I wish that money wasn't such a factor that we had to have guys like brad guys like kyle um you know phasing out of you know i just love dominance i think you know that probably better than anybody and and, yeah. and having kyle bush have to go build something up is is to me it's wasting time for somebody who should just be winning you know well how, how many times did we hear rc and and kyle say today about how richard childress is willing to fight for you and fight with you and Sure. Just, I got the impression so much today from what Kyle was saying that he just didn't feel like he anybody had his back over there. And if you look at the history from that team, the the Eric Joneses, the the Daniel Suarezes, yep. it's not surprising. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the same thing has happened multiple times over there. And and I don't want to just say, oh, Joe Gibbs is a jerk and whatever. It comes down to Joe Gibbs is is a financial business and Joe yes. doesn't have apparently either doesn't have the funds or doesn't have the willingness to, to sign off without a sponsor, without, yeah. without having that backing. And and so from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. you are a commodity that if he can't pay for you, you're gone and it yeah, doesn't it, matter. And, and Eric, when you see Joe Gibbs on pit road, I, I'm so glad you said that because it, it's, it's become so evident, but when you see Joe Gibbs at the race, what what's he wearing on his t-shirt and hat? All four sponsors. All, all the sponsors. Yep. Sponsors are number one for Joe Gibbs racing. They always have been. Well, where does I mean, hope, where does he come from? He's a football coach. That's how the that's NFL right. is. Shrewd. It's cutthroat. You you got a salary cap, man. If you can't make that salary yep. cap, you're gone. And I think that's how Joe Gibbs has been successful, for the lack of the better term. Yeah. They've they've run a shrewd business. And, you know, become yeah, within a they're few. They're certainly not failing by making these decisions. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, you know, I, I think they, I think they do underachieve as far as what their talent level is. I mean, Kyle, you know, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, they've, they've come within laps of championships. But they, I, um, it hasn't Joe Gibbs pretty much. They've won more championships than anybody, but Hendrick lately too. So correct, right? <laughs> I mean, right. So, but they've also they've also been shrewd to the point where I think it's hurt them. And, yeah. You know, I, I was messaging you earlier this week because I was doing a little bit of research because, you know, we were thinking that this move was going to happen. But, you know, when when Tony Stewart left Joe Gibbs and that whole thing went down, remember remember how mad Gibbs was about that mm -hmm. initially? Um, but that whole thing happened. And, and Eric, since Tony Stewart left, they have just as many championships as Joe Gibbs Racing does. Yeah. You know, you think of it that way. Um and and Tony Stewart was 37 years old, same age as Kyle Busch, 37 years old. So does this mean, you know, Kyle Busch is going to go on and he's got plenty of time to win championships, um, you know, post post Joe Gibbs racing? It, it's just, uh, it's it's man, it, it's hard to put into like the proper context. Still, it's so <laughs> fresh and and new but you know it, it's hard too because we've been thinking about this since you know saturday when jordan bianchi really broke it wide open that hey this is this is expected this is happening yeah big big props to jordan bianchi for breaking the story yeah. um let's let's run down some of the some of the specifics here uh james so kyle said today he was asked about the truck team um he says that that K, the the intention is for kbm to field chevy's next season uh, how many of those depends on a lot of things i would assume that sponsorship all that um, the yep. truck series isn't like the cup series. They don't sign drivers, multi-year contracts, anything like that. It's all done at the end of the season for the next year. So that's not yep. surprising. 
Um, Brexton got an option for a future contract with RCR. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I think that was pretty genuine too. I mean, I know as a, as a showboating thing, but I think that was pretty genuine as well. And I mean, why not? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's you know. Um, well, I mean, heck, you the if anybody knows about lineage uh, driving yeah. for their race cars, you know, you've got Austin Dillon there, and um, I mean, Richard Richard knows you know Dale and Dale Junior was a thing. Well, uh, and so. Ri- I mean, Richard's a loyal dude. If you look at the people who have stuck with Richard Childress for a long time, you know, Kevin Harvick had his opportunity to stick around there. Earnhardt obviously is a big story. Mike Skinner was around RCR for a long time. You know, yeah. I mean, so. Yeah. Chocolate Myers, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, exactly. you talking about the you talking about the crew guys who have stuck around forever. He still works for Richard Childress in yep. the museum and stuff. Yep. Um, this so is he, he's around. Um, Kyle confirmed, or Kyle and, and RC confirmed that it is a multi year deal. Um, sounds like Austin Dillon played a major role in yes. getting it done. He, Austin is the one who originally brought it to Richard Childress, and he's the one who approached Kyle on it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, props to Austin Dillon for putting this thing together, and and. I mean that that bodes well for future at you know mm-hmm. Richard Childress Racing between between Austin's dad and himself, um, as to you know maybe ownership down well, the road. I mean yeah, Austin, it's, it's, we know Austin's got got a business. He's got his uh, his bull riding team, and and he's been doing this type of stuff. So yeah, and, and Eric, did you hear the nugget that Austin Dillon said that Kyle approached him to to drive for for KBM in the Xfinity series? No, I did not see that. Yeah, he said uh, about tw- around twenty eleven. Uh, he was racing a lot with Austin in the truck series and said, Hey, I, I know you've got a path here. Hmm. Um, but if you're interested, I, I'd love to talk with you about racing in the nation. And at that time, the nationwide series and uh, Austin said, that's really where that the whole thing started. And I think Austin used it as a little bit of a way to, you know, kind of a, a bleep you to some fans who think, you know, he's only a driver because of nepotism. Right. Um, but kind of cool that that's come full circle where they actually had those initial talks. And now you've got Austin Dillon, bringing him in and and I, and I think Austin sees the big picture here where you bring in Kyle Busch your your organization automatically you know is upgraded yeah, on another level he's so. going to make everybody better yes absolutely uh, you know a team that already is on the upswing and showing major progress he's going to make them even better yes um i didn't this isn't i didn't have it in the notes but uh, also came out today that part of his deal is an option to or the uh, rights or ability whatever permission yep. to run the indy 500 um, chevy teams come get me yeah that's what he said. Yeah. so basically uh, that you can expect that probably next year <laughs> yeah that'd be cool <laughs> um and then richard childress says that tyler reddick's still under contract and will drive a third chartered car i was asked where that charter is coming from and he says he's not ready to talk about that right now here's where you and i get in an argument <laughs> yeah this is well i don't know that we're gonna get in an argument i think we're on the same page I yes, just think I we're probably, getting. I think, we are. I think we're getting to the spot. I, I, in in the end, and Jeff Gluck has a column about this that he he put up today that I read before we did this podcast, and he's got. It, it, he basically spells it out that the best option for Richard Childress and Tyler Reddick is for or Richard Childress and Kyle Busch and Tyler Reddick, all the parties is for Tyler Reddick to get bought out of this contract. He's got to go and yep. go over to twenty three eleven. There's yep. no there's no scenario where this makes things better. By him sticking around. Now, that exactly. being said, as you and I discussed before we recorded the podcast, we know obviously there's there's sponsorship deals. There's yep. there's contracts. I mean, shoot, yep. we don't know who's got the, the footing in this contract, whether it's Richard or whether it's Tyler, as to earning some money here at the end. Yep. And I think, you know, I think the ball's in Richard's court because Richard can hold out as long as he wants and hold Tyler yeah, right. to it. Yep. Um, and, and that's, Eric, what we're seeing here with, with Richard saying that they're going to try to charter a third team for Tyler Reddick. That's this is all the chessboard being yeah. played here because Richard can't tip his hand and being like I want to get this guy out of here right. immediately. Yeah, cuz then the, then the price tag goes up. Exactly. He's got to he's got to keep him under under wraps and he he's got to make Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan come get him. Yeah. You know, and, and whether that's sponsor contracts being bought out or or basically buying Tyler Reddick's remaining contract out from RCR, you know, Richard wants to Richard wants to save the bottom line as much as possible because you know what, what you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. I I don't think keeping Tyler Reddick around and, and stretching the resources out as much as possible with this team is doing anything to make Kyle Busch faster. No. And I think that's got to be their number one goal. And I'm, I am sure that Richard Childers racing understands like we have to put all of our resources. We, we have a once in a generation talent here. We have to put our resources into 
making Kyle Busch as fast as possible. That is our number one goal. I just think Tyler Reddick staying around is not accomplishing anything about that. And Jeff's column talks a little bit about how Tyler Reddick stuck in the middle of this and blah, blah, blah. But don't get me wrong. I don't feel sorry for Tyler Reddick at all. I don't either. No, the they, dude, they put themselves. In yeah. When you announce that you're signing with another, t- another team, 18 months before it happens, you put yourself in this situation. And when you do it, when the biggest free agent ever is available, um, you know, <laughs> kind of, yeah. kind of sealed your own fate there, buddy. So, yeah. Um, and nothing against Tyler. I love Tyler. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see it go either way, James, but I would, yep. I certainly would not be surprised to see, um, MJ write a check and get Tyler out, especially, you know, I think a lot of this is going to depend on what Kurt's status is too. If Kurt's coming sure. back next year, then they don't need to get Tyler over there. Yep. Um, if he's not, then they kind of do. I mean, yeah. Or they got to find somebody else to fill that role, and it's not going to be Ty Gibbs now because you got to assume that Ty Gibbs is going to the eighteen. Yeah, Grandpa's not going to let Ty go right for another team. He's he's going to keep him in house. Exactly. Um, so who do you put and, over and there Ty- then? I mean, there's there's plenty of drivers in the pipeline that will get <laughs> yeah. kicked to the curb at the end of the day too, just like everybody yeah. else. But yeah, and it, and it you know Eric, we don't know how many charters are for sale. Yeah. Either you know, and if it's one charter, let you know, I you know I I mentioned earlier today Rick Ware. Let's use that example, right? Mm-hmm. If, if it's one charter and you've got two different teams bidding for it, the price is going to keep going up. But at yep. some point, RCR is going to run out of funds, whereas I don't know if 2311 has a limit. <laughs> you right. know? I think they can get a charter probably a lot easier than than anyone else in the sport at this point. Um, and they've and got I mean, the there's, expansion There's quick. not a lot of options to get charters. I there's mean, not. Rick Bear Racing, you got... I mean, you've got colleague, but colleagues, they're building a team over there. They're not going to yeah. sell a charter. No, they are not. I think, I think there's going to be bigger intentions for that, that team. I mean, obviously they've already, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't it's, know. I, if I, if I, I'm see, Rick I Ware, see colleague running two teams full time next year, you know? Right. And, and if I'm Rick Ware, I'm making some phone calls. Yeah. Like, Hey, I got this charter. What do you think? Yeah, you I know, I, I don't think Rick Ware needs the money though. I know, but man, they are going to, whoever, whoever sells that charter is going to, this is going to be. <laughs> This is the most expensive charter we're going to see well, and probably I, for a minute. If I were them, I'd get it sold now because if they add to with a new contract, which is a talk that may happen, yes, then that value may potentially go down. So. Now's the time to sell. And Denny, Denny has said in the past these charters are you know, really pricey. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're talking what, Eric? I think we're over $20 million a charter now. Yeah, that's, that more. was a talk as 20 was the last number I've heard. And yeah, yeah they've so probably it, gone up. Yeah. and, and when Especially you situation- right now, you've got a team that needs one. Essentially, well, and you, you yeah, know. and you've got a you've got a playoff driver uh, in limbo, basically. Yeah, uh, who's going to need a charter somewhere along the way? Um, so it's, somebody's got to get it somehow. Yeah. So I, I, unless you're Richard Childress and you're like, you know what, screw it, let's just run him unchartered and make him qualify. I'll bet you anything that that's in the contract though that he's got to be a chartered team. I, it's probably it's, it's got to yeah. be, and it's got to be. There's got to be something in there that he's. In a competitive blah blah blah. I mean, shoot. this is where I'd love to take a peek under the hood of things, right? And, and get all those dirty details. We'll never, we'll never really know. No, no, we're um, not Adam Stern. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. He's got a lot. He's got a pretty quick line. Jim Adam, Adam Stern was there today. He asked a question. I was impressed. I, I don't know. I don't. I'm. He's probably been at the track when I've been there. I don't know how often he comes to the track, but I've never, I've never seen him. Yeah, when when it comes to the business doings of NASCAR, Stern is as tapped in as anybody. Dude, I was going to subscribe to Sports Business Journal just because I appreciate what he does. But yeah, seventy five bucks a month. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no. can get a business license. I, I don't know if the Super Speedway's footing the bill yeah. for <laughs> for the business license no. on the on those. I looked into it too, but it's not great. Yeah, yeah. no. I'll I'll continue to read my one or two articles a month that I get. Yes. And yeah. and follow his Twitter. Yep. Um. So and another thing uh, Kyle mentioned today, he was asked. Uh, Alan Kavana, I believe, asked the question. Uh, about the three car and uh, Kyle says, yeah, I asked, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, he, he let it go, but uh, he asked about it. So good on him. That's, that's cool. You know uh, what, what I love about that point there though, Eric is something that Richard Childress racing actually thrived on throughout its tenure and has not had since 2013 when Kevin Harvick left, they haven't had a certified badass. No. On that team since Kevin Harvick in a, in a decade, Kevin yeah. Harvick left for twenty the twenty fourteen season. And they haven't had they went from Earnhardt to Harvick like he, those guys are just badasses. Yep. And now you've got 
you know, you got a badass in Kyle Busch coming in. Well, so. and I have a prediction, James, and I'm basing this prediction on a the Reddit thread that I read this week, and b listening to 15, 20 minutes of Sirius XM today. Um, this is Kyle's Kurt Busch moment. Yeah, he he, yeah. he will be a fan favorite next year, and it will be crazy. Oh. He's going to be. <laughs> The people, it's a big mountain to climb. The people that were calling in today thrilled that Kyle is going to Richard Childress with so much respect. People saying, I've booed him all this time. Now I've got to cheer for him. Yeah. Those those Earnhardt fans are loyal, man. And I think he's going to pick up a whole new fan base with this. And I, I think you're going to hear people cheering more than booing Kyle Bush, Unless he does something stupid, which he's got the ability to do that yeah, yeah. um but eric, uh, if i if i go back in time to 2000 and i say eric listen <laughs> there's gonna come a time where the two most least popular drivers in the entire sport are driving for richard childress racing <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you say because <laughs> i think that's what we've got here but i do think you're right because he's coming over to the bow tie brigade yeah um people like the story of somebody kind of getting shunned a little bit yep um, you know, Kyle's eventually got to jump the shark at some point because he's the old guy now. Uh, yeah. so yeah, he's, he's I think this is the start. Due. This is the start, man. This it's, it's crazy to think as a, as somebody who's been a Kyle fan all this time and he's, dealt with people booing him, he's got to put in the work. Yeah, he does. And, and I think, you know, part of the reason he's in the situation he got into this season is because he's never really put in the work there. Yeah. And you know, I think it's it's hindered him to a to a certain extent. So now is the, now is his chance. It's his his fresh start, so to speak. I gotta admit, when they they showed the the video of him walking up beside the car with the eight on it and his name on the windshield, I went back to my pictures from the RCR shop just to see if there was a car that had an eight on it with no <laughs> sponsors on it in the background somewhere. Yeah, but there wasn't. Oh, <laughs> I was yeah, so disappointed that that was cool. that was in the basement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no access for uh, for peons like us, I guess. Yeah, so, two two yeah. weeks ago today, I was at RCR, so it was. Oh man, you the, were the deal was and, pretty close to happening at that point. Yeah, and the Hall of Fame, you probably right? crossed past them and didn't even know it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You snuck in with a turtleneck on, and yeah, you never even knew. <laughs> Man. Uh, so, I mean, let's rank this, James. We, let's talk major, major moments, major, um, you know, drivers switching teams. Yeah. I, I'm struggling to think of, I, I mean, obviously I go back to, to Dale Jr. leaving um, Junior Motorsports and going to Hendrick. That was a huge deal. Yeah. Um, I would say this definitely is equivalent to that. Um, maybe Tony Stewart leaving for his own team, but. I don't feel like that feels as major to me, but you're the, you're the Tony fan. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think Stuart Haas racing being formed, uh, was definitely a big shift in the sport performance yeah. wise. Uh, I mean, that team's won, I mean, 10 years or so. Well, a little, yeah, it's been over. Yeah. It's, they're going to be close to 15 years. I, I think legacy wise. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that but team, the initial move itself. Yeah. That, that, that to me felt like when Daryl Waltrip left Hendrick, you know, it was a, oh, maybe we'll see how yeah, it turns out. Yeah, that one out. had me, I, I'll, I will tell you, when Tony announced he was leaving Joe Gibbs, I was shook pretty bad. Yeah. And because he was going to team up with ha with, right? with Haas. And I'm like, what? Yeah. This can't, this isn't great. This isn't good. What am I going to do? And I was in my peak of my, <laughs> you know, smoke fandom back then. So, but it, yeah. it worked out fine. Uh, that team did, did pretty good. They performed really well. Um, gosh, Eric, it's, it's tough, man, because guys leaving like matt kenseth was was one but you don't get guys leaving but, in the peak of their career like this yeah guys with multiple championships going elsewhere that one that's that's hard to come by the martin the, tricks jr thing was big only because that team had just won a title yeah and but now that he was, was being full but I mean, he was he being was folded going, in i mean yeah he was going to an affiliate uh, affiliated yes. team so that's different well you know that was that was joe gibbs playing dirty pool that right exactly too. that's true yeah. That's true. But I mean, yeah. like, I mean, you usually these guys, I mean, Earnhardt stayed put, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson both stayed put. Usually these guys don't make a move yeah. like this. As far as driver, like all time rank guys that have, have moved on, Kyle, Kyle and Tony are neck and neck with each other. Yeah. As, as far as I'm concerned with the all time drivers, I mean, they're pick one. I don't care which one. They're both top 10 all time and, and they're, they're basically right next to each other in my book. So. I bet um, you. I guess if you went back in history, maybe one of the Daryl Waltrip moves—not when he started his own team, but 
Yeah. Maybe with when he, I can't remember with, if it was when he left Die Guard or when he went to Die Guard, there was a whole big deal there where he bought out of his contract, and that was a big deal with between yeah. Junior Johnson and Die Guard, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that probably ranks on par with this, but I mean, current day, man, this just doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah, this is... Yeah, we, we don't get the big shock moves. You know, Carl Edwards... Um, yeah, Carl ranks pretty high up there. But he... I mean, that was writing on, on the wall. Roush was in a bad spot. Um, yeah, and I that, that one... Point. I think, too, that... Yeah, exactly. That was part of it. And the legacy of it never really played out because Carl didn't finish... I mean, he finished his career before his career was over. You know what I mean? Like, he still had so yeah. much potential left. Left, left that, Joe Gibbs at the age of 37. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with with a shot to win a championship just months beforehand, um, yeah, that was a crazy one. So, um, so Mark Martin coming back full time yeah. was was another one. I I thought you know driving for Rick Hendrick that yeah that because was people big. were like oh Mark Martin's driving part time that's fine yeah um but then he went to drive for Rick Hendrick and it was like holy crap Mark Martin's coming over and he kicked out Kyle Busch to to get that seat over yeah there. and I guess I mean the Casey Kane deal at the time was a pretty big deal too although it didn't play out. Yep. Um, but so the, the funny thing about this is, so Kyle has his days of thunder obsession, right? He, his, yeah. his most of his team numbers are based off of the, off of the movie. He, yep. his, his shop is on thunder road. Um, <laughs> he has, he has, I mean, he's rowdy. He nicknamed himself rowdy based on rowdy burns. He has rowdy burns, he his did. helmet in his display case in his shop. And now Kyle Busch is driving for the team the original Rowdy drove for in Dale Earnhardt, sure. who Rowdy was based off of. So, yep. I mean, that I bet you there's a little bit of that that was enticing to him, too. You know? I kind of wish he would have taken the number with him. Yeah. 51. It would have been great. Yeah. But, but he Eric, made a point here, here, today, too. Here's that one that's going to. I liked what he said today about the numbers that he goes and he drives the number of the team that he's driving for. And that's what he does with KBM yep. now, too. They've got their set numbers. And. I mean, I still personally think that the number should go with the driver, not the team. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's well. Here, here, here's one that'll uh, here's one that'll rattle some people a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the the now the the as soon as he takes the wheel, he's the greatest driver ever to drive the eight car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, come at me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm there sorry. I couldn't help it. There you go. It's low hanging fruit. My bad. <laughs> My bad. You know, Eric, one thing we didn't mention with this that I did want to touch on, though, because yeah. um, I, I think this I think this did sway into Kyle's decision making for this as well. We know that Chevrolet is making that new Taj Mahal for motorsports, and it's going to help, you know, increase Chevrolet performance across all of their teams is what they're what they're hoping for. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so now that KBM gets to be folded into that and Kyle gets to possibly drive these chevrolets um gives him an option as a future owner in the sport yeah. down the line um but does he see does kyle see something with the way toyota does business and how chevy is going to start doing things that he finds intriguing as well does he see the writing on the wall that all chevy teams are going to be uplifted by what what they're doing on the r d side Maybe. And, and another thing worth noting, too, and I can't remember if it was in the in the Jordan Bianchi piece or somewhere else, um, but something, that, again, we didn't get much in the way of details for KBM today, but um, the talk is is that GMS is going to leave the truck series um, and Chevy needed a presence. They needed a, a mm -hmm. top team and that, that this is enticing for Chevy because of that as well, that, that KBM will take that footprint over in the it's truck series. Kill. so. Yeah, this is gonna kill Toyota in the Truck Series. Yeah, in a, in a, I mean, who who's left? Well, I mean, um, you got the the Thor, uh, Thor, Sport Thor Sport is still all yep. all Toyota, so I mean yep. that's a pretty big team. But Thor they won goes, the championship last year. Yeah, <laughs> so. but and Thor Sport goes back and forth. They're not afraid to switch manufacturers. So no, maybe that's Toyota, true. Yeah, maybe Toyota's like you know this is because Toyota, you know, the one thing that Toyota does really well um, is they do have decent driver development lower series development well not and, only that but they they work with their partners to spot i mean their their partners sponsored kbm trucks they work with kyle bush yeah yeah i mean yeah. safe light is through toyota that's you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those those sponsors are coming from from toyota 
Yeah. Um, and so Toyota can certainly pump those over to, to Thor Sport and uh, and improve their situation too. So Thor, Thor Sport's probably loving this decision too. Yeah. What a, what an epic loss for Toyota. No kidding. Just, I mean, God, good grief. I mean, they lose they lose their best feeder team. Yeah. They lose their best driver of all time. The best, you know, Kyle Busch will be when he goes into the hall of fame you know, he's the greatest driver in the history of the toyota yeah you know but you know, manufacturer denny hamlin has some work to do to catch him yeah he's got to click off a couple championships for sure yeah exactly kyle bush delivered their first win their first championship in the cup series he's yeah. he is toyota so it's going to be strange to see him back in the bow tie uh in the bow tie of gray but uh and i think man, that's toyota, something Toyota's james lost, i think that's going to help drivers. that's going to help him in the fandom too because there are a lot of people still Oh, they, they hate do Toyota. not like them yep. Toyotas. That's right. Those dang, them dang Toyotas. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So. so, yeah, that's, uh, that is definitely going to help him. And, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I wonder, you know, back to the Chevrolet point, mm -hmm. you know, Chevrolet, the Chevrolet priority pyramid, um, Hendrick Motorsports goes one. We've seen track house probably become number two based on performance. I think RCR, takes that spot back i think so too and they've it's 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 crowded though at chevrolet now really crowded they, when, you, got, when you add kyle bush it's crowded now they've got the relate the historical relationship with chevy too childress has run chevy right, i mean he mentioned right. today he's he's run chevy since he was racing his camaro yep um so there's a lot of loyalty there and i mean you know yeah track house but track house i mean they mentioned andrew petrie was on sirius xm today and and basically said that last year they ran that 99 car out of the children's shop yes Yep. And so, I mean, Trackhouse is a, is essentially a Childress startup now that on their own. So, yep. um, you know, so that's, it, it, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how that whole, all that hierarchy falls, but um, well, and like you said, car, it's, it's it definitely crowded. Much. Yeah, and, and maybe it doesn't matter as much with the new car, yeah. you know, maybe. Well, and I, I mean, GMS not. has obviously a relationship with them too, with, with yep. their, with uh, Petty GMS. So, yep. I mean. But hey, Chevy likes to win, so I think they're willing to put as many, as many uh, you know, options in, on the table as they can. And, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah it's uh, so the the Chevrolet the, the drivers under the Chevrolet banner now. It, you know, when you add Kyle Busch, I mean that's a, that's a murderer's row when you've got Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Busch. That's your last three champions. Yeah. Uh, now they all drive Chevrolets. They're not competing, you know, manufacturer wise against each other. There, there is something to be. There is something to this whole Chevrolet thing. Um, you know, it's not just Kyle changing teams. It's it's the, a big shift in the manufacturer. And I just make sh you know think that I think we've talked about it plenty. But it, it's it's something that is is like the the second item of the you know of the of the biggest news of the season so far. Um, now we have Chevrolet making a power move here, stealing Toyota's best guy. Uh, and, and bringing him in is is definitely a power move. I, I love it. I love it for that aspect of it because I, I I like the gamesmanship because I want to see if Toyota can answer. Yeah. Or do they do they stay put? You know, and and run with what they got and bring in Ty Gibbs and Tyler Reddick and and be happy with that. So I don't know Ty Gibbs and Tyler Reddick for Kyle Busch. Hmm, it's we'll like see. a basketball trade or a yeah. basically you know we'll see how <laughs> it plays out, man. Picks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we we shall see how this plays out, but um, but yeah, so I, I tweeted today. It'll be really interesting to see when all this is said and done. You know, twenty thirty years from now, what who who benefited the most from this deal? Yep, yeah, we can look on. We can look back. Heck, even even ten years, Eric. You know, you look back at Tony Stewart leaving Joe Gibbs Racing. I, I think Tony Stewart won that one. Yeah. Um, I you know I, Dale Junior. To Hendrick, I mean, DEI died and and was probably was probably going to be in a really bad spot. So, I'd, you know, Dale Jr. wins that one, yeah. even though I think he left a lot to be desired um, towards the beginning of that run. But it's it's so interesting how the I mean, we're in the moment right now of a giant shift, and it's really cool to be back in it. We haven't had this, we haven't had this kind of a kind of a thing happen in quite a, quite a while. So it's going to be fun to kind of be on this ride and, and I'm glad we have this podcast that we can, we can talk about it and we can, yep. you know, reference it, you know, at some point it'll be kind of a cool little time capsule for us too. Yep. For sure. Well, on that note, James, believe it or not, there was a race this weekend too. Yeah. We got to get to the second episode of our 
yeah. of our podcast. I mean, it was a pretty damn good race, too. Uh, oh, man, was it? Yeah. Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas uh, Speedway. Bubba Wallace. Bubba freaking Wallace, James has in the notes. Yeah, man. Gets it done and silences the haters. <laughs> Eric, back-to-back weeks. So I, I went on a I went on a I went on a uh, a tirade last week because I was so pumped about Eric Jones winning, <laughs> and when Bubba Wallace got out of that car and gave the and gave him all the sh, yep. I was I was like, yep, that a boy, let him have it, Bubba. Because they can't say nothing. They I was so annoyed nothing. cheering for him because it was your pick, but man, I wanted him to win that race. I felt like I don't know. I felt like picking Bubba was the easiest pick i mean i had him in fantasy like he well that's that's why i was kicking myself afterwards james because running so good yeah i i don't know why i didn't pick him i I so should have picked him because he was on my list last week but eric he this was not a run-of-the-mill like there there's i mean i love that he gave the shush because there is nothing anyone can say about this race he went toe-to-toe with alex bowman yep Took took him to the woodshed. Had a great pit stop late. Team did what it was supposed to. Well, so came Denny back Hamlin... from a bad pit stop too. Yeah, I know. Denny Hamlin wins because he fixed the pit crew apparently, and yeah. then goes and, and hangs on, battling through lap traffic. Just a great green flag run. Denny Hamlin's trying to run him down, and just posed. Doesn't you know they were give, they were giving him intervals, and he was like, "No, nah, I don't care. I yeah. got this. I loved it, man. I loved everything about this win. This is." Uh, I, 18 winners on the season now like this is man we are in this is a great spot to be in for nascar right now this is this is this is all good stuff i i don't think there's anything i don't, I mean if you hate bubble wallace i don't even know if you can say anything bad about this one this was start to finish just a great just a great event well i, I will advise you not to go on twitter then because there's oh, certainly sure. people that can, can say bad things but yeah oh, i mean of course. there of course. it's it's really hard to uh it's hard to find a, a a flaw in this, you know, win. I mean, it was like you said, he did everything. They 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 yep. overcame an obstacle. They had a great last pit stop. He ran, you know, outran other people. There was no yep. rain that shortened anything. There were no phantom cautions. Yep. All around, just earned this victory, and uh, yeah, just, did what he was supposed to do learned from his failures at Michigan. The team learned from their failures at Michigan and continue to put on a a gauntlet of finishes that has just elevated this team. And and you you almost wish they would have found this seven races sooner in the, in the season, because they would be not just competing for that owner's championship, but competing for a, for a cup series championship right now, because they, they found it. They've really stumbled into it late in the season you got to hope that it continues for him um throughout the rest of the throughout the rest of the 2022 campaign yeah um just a note to james you mentioned 18 winners on the season if you want to get really technical yes of course we have had 21 winners this season of course yes. because chris busher and brad kozlowski both won the duels and ryan blaney won, won the all-star the race. race so i yes, mean and that's that's the crazy thing so we've had 18 winners um We've had half the field win races yeah. <laughs> this season. And yeah. not only have we had half the field win races this season, James, but <laughs> Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr. haven't won a points race yet. <laughs> yeah. Two of the best. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. we, we very possibly could hit 20 before the end of the season. There, and- there, there is a small demon inside of me <sighs> that is kind of hoping that Ryan Blaney wins the championship without winning a race. Just for the, just for the, that's funny. <laughs> just for the sake of being goofy. Well, and then, so here's the other thing too. So we've had two playoff races now with no playoff drivers winning them. Um, so right now we go, so here's the deal, James, we go into Bristol this week. There's one driver safe. Who is it? Christopher freaking bell. <laughs> yeah. Who had that on their bingo card? Right. Yeah. And now, technically, if you want to get technical, Eric, Bubba Wallace is a playoff driver. Just true. The, that is true. The, no, he's not a we... playoff driver. He's a playoff team, James. Let's that's get it right. correct. Well, they are they are locked into the next round. Yeah. So I want uh, that's what I want to see. I want to see them win the championship. I want to see them win the owners' championship with that car. That would be pretty cool if they could find a way to pull that off. It's very unlikely, but man, would it be something to. So what do you think, James? Is this the season that we finally have a champion that doesn't win the championship race? It could be. We're I think it's looking a, pretty likely. 
Yeah, I mean, golly, you know, like you go to Phoenix and let's say Chase Briscoe gets eliminated before then. I mean, yeah, yeah. he could go and win that race. Martin Truex Jr. could win that race. He's almost he almost won that race, you know, a year ago. So yeah, there's there's guys who can win that race. Um, it's it's been, God, it's it's just gonna it's just been so tight. There's so much parity. Yeah, not it's not incredible. a lot of guys safe right now. That's for that's for sure. Absolutely um, incredible. Yeah, I mean it's you know after we get through the first stage at Bristol, some guy some of this is going to clean up, clean itself up. We'll talk about points probably in a little bit, but um, you know I, the the deck will be shuffled in the right direction here. But yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of guys fighting for everything. Right I mean now. it it's hard to say because we've had so much trouble with playoff drivers in this. Oh my god! In, in this you know first two round or first two races of the playoffs, um, Kevin, Poor Harvick, Kevin Harvick. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. Poor Kevin Harvick, but Kevin, what the hell are you racing that hard for that well, this early was in the a, race? Yeah, this was a Kevin Harvick screw up. Yeah, definitely. Now, last week, nothing you can he could do no. done about that. That car was was running really well. Um, yeah, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's got a lot going on, <laughs> and none of it seems to be positive. So, <laughs> um, I I don't. He's I, he's too high up on the soapbox right now, and he's, he's having really trouble firing. steering that car. <laughs> yeah, man, he's really firing off, but. Like you have Tyler Reddick, right? Blow a tire, um, have just as bad of a day as Kevin Harvick. He's in. Yeah. He's still in. Yeah. It's close, but he's still in. It's incredible. Well, that's what that's what comes with a second place finish last week versus a yes. thirty some place finish like Harvick had. That's right. So Harvick basically is the only driver that needs to win. I mean, he's not mathematically out, but he's thirty five points gotta out. Win. He's gotta win. Yeah, yeah. He he's gotta win. Um but, you know, Bristol is a track he can do that at, so we'll see. Um, I mean, we don't know what to expect at Bristol. We'll talk more as we get to the Bristol preview. Yep. Um, you mentioned Tyler Reddick has his trouble, um, gets mouthy with, uh, with, yeah, he did. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Kim Kuhn. Yeah, he was, I think it was with Kim Kuhn. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and Kim, I checked her Twitter to see if anybody was treating her like an idiot because I figured somebody would be. And of course somebody did. And she's pointed out, she was told by the producers to ask that question and he got snotty. Um, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. These drivers should expect it, but I guess he can't yeah. hurt. He can't, I don't know. The he, way he, he the did. way the question was worded sounded kind of stupid, but you just yeah. whatever. I mean, <laughs> none of these guys are happy when they get out of their cars. No, they're not. But I, no. I felt for Kim. I mean, Kim's a Kim's a good reporter. I like Kim. So yeah, she's been doing a good job. Don't be yep. taking don't be taking shots at Kim. She's doing good on TV. It's nice to have her on TV versus doing the radio thing. Um, and then give Kyle Busch. Give Tyler Reddick crap for not. Being a gentleman about it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Be, let's, let's go old school. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that's acceptable anymore. Um, Kyle Busch spins on his own coming off of turn four, damages his car, pretty much ends his chances. Um, yeah. Which he had a really interesting run because at the beginning of the race, they couldn't take off. And then they got that fixed. And he was coming through the field and then just lost on his own, man. Yep. And that's the thing that was interesting with this race is so much, you know, we've seen, we've seen these teams learn so much about these cars throughout the season. And I really expected us to see a much different race here, but it was really similar to the spring and drivers spinning out on their own, making mistakes, tire issues. I mean, only Reddick really, well, there was Reddick and I forget who else. A couple others had tire issues as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, it just, it, it, I don't know this track or this car for these mile and a half tracks. And it's disappointing to see James, the number of people that were in the stands at Kansas, yeah, um, we're gonna get a schedule announcement tomorrow. It sounds like for the Cup Series, uh, and I would I would not be surprised to see a race date taken away from this track. And I just hope they replace it with another mile and a half somewhere because um, it, it's disappointing to see a bad turnout for such a great race because this place just performed, man. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, this was one of the. I don't know. You know, I I think it was. I think it was. Um, Gosh, I want to say it was William Byron, but I could be mistaken. But he, they were in the media center, and they said, that, you know, I think people think that that uh, just because the 45 won again, that uh, that the same setup is what worked. And he said, we, we have come a long way since then. Yeah. And, and that I took that as such a great sign because it was such an entertaining race, like you said. It was just wild, and these teams are still, you know, they're they're getting better with these cars, and it's still wild and crazy. So, yep. it's definitely a, a shame if we, 
which is so funny. We finally fixed the mile and a half <laughs> just at the, just as the point where they're going to start going extinct on us. So, yeah. but yeah, we're going to lose. Probably we're going to lose Kansas. We've already lost Michigan and the auto clubs getting cut, you know, cut down. We know Chicago land's not coming back for a couple of years, but man, I'd love to see him put Kentucky back on and see what Kentucky know, can do with this package. There's grumblings that Texas is going to become a Frankenstein yeah. monster as well. Um, so we're going to lose that one. Um, so yeah, we've, there's some stuff going on, but yeah, we're, we're losing them. Kentucky. Yeah. Chicago. Like you said, it's, it's a bummer because we finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I guess I, you know, I, it depends on what we see this week at Bristol for sure. So, right. Yeah. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else really worth discussing in this race. Um, Kyle Bush, Austin Dillon, uh, Chase Briscoe and Kevin Harvick are the four outside looking in. We mentioned Kevin Harvick, pretty much the only must win driver. Um, basically Daniel Suarez, Tyler Reddick, um, Austin Sindrick are questionable, uh, on the bubble in 10th, 11th yep. and 12th. Ross Chastain, probably pretty comfortable plus 26. Um, but you know, he's probably gonna have a pretty big target at Bristol. So yeah, you gotta watch that one. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see. I think anybody above him probably is pretty safe unless they have a really terrible day. Um, and as we know, uh, Christopher Bell, the only one officially locked in, uh, yeah. to this Crazy. one. So, and, uh, one of my guys who I said was first four out was Kevin Harvick. And, uh, I yeah. didn't expect it to look like this, but, right? um, yeah, that's interesting, but that guy can go win Bristol. Yeah. So we'll see. But yeah, Stuart Haas, um, first two out, <laughs> right? Looks, looking that way. Uh, and, and you got to, may I feel a little bad for, for Kevin Harvick just because he's, you know, I don't know. This, they were, they felt like they were going to get on a roll and it's completely been zapped. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of it was not of his doing. And exactly. I can understand yeah, I mean, why he's so you frustrated, about? you know? Oh, that's, and that's motorsports, man. It's going to happen. Yeah. Definitely when you design a car, too. Like, yep. they've designed this one. <laughs> <laughs> to, to put rubber on hot parts. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As Harvick said. So, yep. Uh, uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series had the Kansas Lottery 300 on Saturday. Um, well, the Kansas Lottery, what, 150? Something Not like even that. 150. They didn't even make it halfway in this. Yeah, thing. they went. They were like four uh, laps short of halfway. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it, they didn't. They didn't go very far. <laughs> this. <laughs> this one. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say here other than Noah Gregson gets the win. Yeah. Um, Great stage finish, though. Um, yeah. Ty Gibbs and Justin Allgaier banging off each other's doors. Um, so that was kind of cool. But, yeah, not much to say about the Xfinity Series race because we didn't really get to see much of it. Yeah, it we, we pretty Ty much Gibbs saw the part where everybody's just trying to get to the third stage and – Never really got to see the race, so I mean, I'll, I'll, we saw the heat know. races, James. We didn't see the actual, we didn't see the main event. Yeah, which is, you know, if it has to happen, let it be on the Xfinity right. Series Saturday, and not mess with our Cup race. But it I don't still know, it sucks. Could've, it could have been on, it could have been on Friday with the Truck Series, so we didn't have to watch that awful broadcast. Oh God, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I guess we'll talk about that now. I don't know how you, if, that, if that's your transition, let's go. Yeah, let's let's talk Fox, about the truck series. Doing? I don't care about it anymore about the Xfinity series. Yeah, no, Gregson, good job. Tim yeah. Richmond keeps winning. I, I guess it. it is worth it, it is worth noting that uh, they are ready to end their regular season at Bristol. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right now, Ryan Sieg and, and uh, Sheldon Creed are the two outside looking in. Uh, Jeremy Clements in. We'll talk about that in the news here in a moment. Yeah. Um, but it could uh, get wild at Bristol. Yes. Which would, this which could it, be the best race of the weekend. Yeah, it was last year. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh so, yeah. So yeah, truck series, uh, crappy Fox broadcast. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. The well, Eric, you've, I don't know you. I don't even know if you have any bullets left. In I the, got nothing in left, man. It's just, Fox. I, I have no expectations going into these races. I mean, good Lord. How can you not let us know what the point situation is? I, I mean, I, I check in on the truck series. I don't watch it religiously, you know, but I like to check in from time to time. And I mean, I messaged you on Friday night. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. But I don't think, I think you were busy, but I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I watched the bad. race late. So, <laughs> but, uh, but our boy, our boy, Carson Hosevar, man, you know, on, on the positive side. It almost side, I get, well, worked, man. It almost it worked. It almost happened. <laughs> oh man. Such a bummer. He had it. I was so disappointed uh, that he didn't win that race, especially because he was my pick. <laughs> yeah, and that, well, that, and he was, I mean, 
you never see the gamble pay off in a no. way like that, but he comes one lap away from making it to the next round. And in the he truck series, the man, cut. you don't, you do not expect a long green flag run at the end of a truck series race. Oh God, no! It just never happens. And he missed the he missed it by such a minimal margin, and yeah. all he had to do was win the dang race. Oh God! No. To be fair, he, he, not that it, it's any consolation, but the next night he went out to uh, Birch Run and won uh, the CRA late oh. model race there. Yeah. He's, he's not worried about championships, I guess, at this point. I guess not. Um, um, the the terrible season of, of uh, John Hunter Nemechek, while ter- terrible, well, terrible might be too strong. <laughs> terrible, terrible you're you're him, slightly I biased, but I, yeah, I think. I got higher expectations for what he's got going on. But so, only his second win of the season. Um, well, but not I, only yeah, win, but just, just freaking swept this whole thing. Started on the pole, won all, won yeah, all stages. Do, yeah, this um, is the race you expect John Hunter Nemechek. Yeah, have. this is what he should be doing every week. Go kick their butt. 88 laps led out of 134. I mean, yep. only two other drivers with double digits. What, I just realized what's going to happen to John Hunter next season. Now. I don't know. <laughs> He's trying to stay in the Toyota camp in the truck series. No, anyway. Yeah. Oh, my God. John Hunter, what a mess his career has become. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a big old poop on his big win, but I, yeah. he frustrates me. I'm frustrated. <laughs> we uh, so we end the end the fir- the first round of the playoffs for them. Carson Hosevar and uh, Matt Crafton are the two out, uh, eliminated after Kansas. No, yep. no, uh, no uh, winless. What is it? Winless championships. That's what uh, Matt Crafton's good at. Right. So, yeah. No winless championships for Matt Crafton this year. Yep. Um. So now you got Stuart Friesen. Uh, Shit, I don't know these guys' names <laughs> to go with these <laughs> damn numbers. Uh, I just have the numbers in front of me. Zane uh, Smith's in there. Zane Smith, Christian. No, I'm I'm going with the the guys on the oh outside the guys looking outside in. looking in. Stuart Friesen. Uh, who's the 66? <laughs> you can do it, Eric. You can do it. The 66, the 23, the 98. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hold on, we can do Eric. We can do this. Hold on. Hold on. Christian Eckes okay. is one of them. Christian Eckes is one of them. And that's the hold 98. On. Let me pull this up. <laughs> God, we, got this. we sound professional. Here. All right. So the twenty three is Grand Enfinger. Yeah, I knew that. I okay. just I didn't get there. Who's read the me 66? another read me another sixty six. Sixty six is the only one I need. The sixty six that belongs to Is it Majestic? Yeah, okay. Yep. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Those we are the four outside looking in. We could just edit this out of the podcast, but we're not nah, that professional. We we'll leave it, it in. Go. So No, no, we leave it in. There you go. That's truck series as they head into Bristol. Uh, great weekend of racing. You know, uh, we got yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Uh, Arca series is in action on Thursday night as well. Um, there you go. All right. Uh, a little bit of the news, I guess, you know, probably the biggest news item, James, that has completely been overshadowed by Kyle what a Bush. Podcast. What a podcast. Right. Uh, we got the announcement uh, last week that North Wilkesboro will host the 2023 all-star race. Oh boy. When they uh when they announced that they weren't going to tear the asphalt up the day before this announcement came, it was I knew that this was it. Yeah, and they said it wasn't going to be safe to run. I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. I'm well, like, they, they sure. couldn't they couldn't put together a quality facility, blah blah blah. What what came about is and I They are going to put together a quality yeah, facility exactly. for the Cup Series. I I heard of some rumblings after the race down there that they they were thinking about not tearing the asphalt up because it raced great. I mean, it 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 wore tires out, but it wasn't. It didn't break up or anything for those late models. I mean, it, the yeah. track was perfect, and I don't think you want fresh asphalt. To be honest, you you want a no, track that's don't. worn out. So yeah. so it'll be interesting to see how much uh, progress they make on on restoring this place before we go to the All Star Race next year in May. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have running water there. Uh, we won't have to have porta potties. <laughs> Um, but hell, you know what, James? Uh, to be quite honest, if they left this place exactly the way it is, with the paint wearing yep. off, it would still be spectacular. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna be a cool deal. I, I'm excited about this. I already reserved my room. Um, I tried to try to get ticket to get on the priority list for tickets, but um, and they're not gonna be my jackass this week because I got a different one. But uh, SMI <laughs> certainly could have put a little bit more money into the website that they used. Um, oh man, because it did not. Did not work. Took an hour to sell a thousand uh, Speedway Children's Charity donations to get priority, uh, get on the priority list. Not even guaranteed to be on the priority list for tickets. Um, but uh, yeah, I tried multiple times to donate to Speedway Children's Charities and failed to do so thanks to the shitty website. So, 
<laughs> Eric, from day one, you and I were both on the. They are not sinking that much money into that place not to bring the Cup Series there. No. Yeah. However, I can't believe they spun it around in a year. Yeah, I can't believe it's, it's this been a, quick. It's been a year. I, I figured yeah. 2024. I did not think 2023. Well, they're going to capitalize on the momentum they got. Yeah. So. Here we are. I mean, this is the best thing for the people that are fans of the Speedway because it means that they're gonna. There's not enough time to have the California thing happen, to where something prevents That's them right. from starting this project. They got to start on it right away. They got to fix this place up, and you know it'll be in tip top shape for the All Star race next year. Um, yeah, they'll have it ready. They got time. They, they have enough time. seating for twenty thousand people right now. They did that for uh, for the uh, for the late model race. So let's see how many more seats they can put in that place before this one. Well, the the best thing about being at North Wilkesboro, well, there's there's two things. The best the best thing is we're not at Texas anymore. Right. Thank God. <laughs> the next best thing is um, let's just race. Yeah. No gimmicks. Yes, please. Let's do just not race. do just you know, give us some heat races and a feature. Let's make this yeah. a late model yeah. style race. And on that note, let's leave the Xfinity series and the Truck series at home. Let's run some late models on this weekend with the Cup cars. Um, give yep. some exposure to the cars series. Give some exposure to some of these late model series. Um, and if let's you're make go it local. Go local. Yep. Let's yep. make it a grassroots weekend. Now, if Bowman Gray gets on the Cup Series schedule, oh, man. we'll uh, we'll really be on to something. <laughs> well, they could do that instead of the Coliseum. They've raced the next gen car at Bowman Gray. Yeah, they tested there. So. Yeah. yeah, it's been on the Cup schedule yeah. before, James. It can happen. It's been a long time, but it's been on the schedule. Eric Wynn, so you you lived a different experience of this than I did yeah. in 1996. And now you've been there in person, so it's a whole you're in a whole other realm. Yeah. Um, but when this place died in 1996 mm-hmm. and and we are almost 30 years later. Yeah. How uh how astonished are you at, at all of this at oh, this point? I mean, I just I I talked about it last week on the podcast just how in awe I was walking into that place because I didn't think I'd ever see it, yeah. let alone see racing there. I mean, I figured – because w- what I mean is that I figured it would be closed off and that you could drive by it and see the, the fence and that, but you wouldn't actually get to go into the track. Yeah. And now to see it not only have racing, but now the Cup Series is coming back there. Um, I, it's, it's unbelievable because – I mean, I went back and watched, James, the last race there – yeah. NASCAR has it on their YouTube channel. Yep. And I mean, the whole thing, they knew back then that this was the last race here. This was billed as the last race there. Yep. They knew North Wilkesboro was closing. They expected it to be gone. And the fact that it's back is just amazing. And just thank goodness. Thank goodness they had caretaker, a caretaker there to, to keep it up, at least to yep. where it wasn't completely falling apart. And that it just got left alone for all that time and, and able yep. to be recovered. Yep. Yep, it's amazing, man. It's just, I, you know, we talked about it in depth last week, and now you have the All Star Race coming. It's just unbelievable what momentum and and uh, some taxpayer dollars can do. Right. Sorry, sorry, I I stuck that in there. I can. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I well, I'm, and a, I, I'm a sucker for. I don't like that tax people taxpayers pl- pay for stadiums and arenas, but. I guess I have to make an exception because this is awesome. Well, so. I saw I saw a tweet, and I don't mean to be political because we're we're never political on this podcast at all. And, no, we and I'm not that. joking about that. But somebody tweeted, uh, "Isn't it interesting to, that the uh, the results of the last election brought back North Wilkes Pro?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else tweeted the Joe Biden sticker that says, "I did that." That the people are put, we're putting on the gas pumps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was pretty funny. I didn't see that. That's actually really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, so, I like that. You, you can have your political yep. opinions all you want, but there you go. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, you got to be able to laugh. Yeah. If you can't laugh at that, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Exactly. Hey, man, if that's if that's the only good thing that Joe Biden did, then we, it's a win, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just incredible. I, I, I'm so excited. I, I'm disappointed that it's next year because I really I want to go to it, um, but – to go one year after I just did the North Wilkesboro thing, probably not going to happen. Not to mention there'll be a million people trying to get into this thing. And Oh my uh, God. Like I said, I reserved the room just in case, uh, got a nice good rate on it. So yep. lock that in. We'll see what happens. Yep. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. All we'll right. see what's announced tomorrow. Cause depending on what tracks are on the schedule, um, who knows? 
Yep. Speaking of that, let's talk about the schedule a little bit more, James. Uh, we'll get to Jeremy Clemens in a minute. Uh, schedule coming tomorrow. We didn't hold the podcast an extra day. We already got the KBM news. We already got the North Wilkesboro news. Um, we'll uh, we'll talk about the schedule next week. But predictions. The, let's 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 make some hot takes here. Um, oh yeah. A hot take that will be completely out of date by tomorrow when most people listen to this podcast. Um, what uh, any any expectations coming from this? Anything coming that we that you think? I mean, we have no inside information about the schedule um, for the Cup yeah. Series. So, any thoughts? Um, well, what would be a big gosh, surprise to you? What is that... an expectation to you? I guess. What would be a big surprise? Um, a big surprise to me would be if they removed the dirt off of Bristol. Oh man! Which that's what I would root for. That won't happen. But I don't. It's not going to happen. The fans, or not the fans, the TV partners like it too much. Um, I do expect that there's going to be a major shift in um, where some of these mile and a halfs are placed, and and by that meaning we're going to lose a Kansas state where, mm-hmm. you know, that means the playoff schedule is probably going to be adjusted um, along the way. I didn't think about that, um, but you're right. Does Michigan move, does Michigan move around <laughs> a little bit? Um, I think what NASCAR is going to try to probably do is build some momentum um, into the playoffs a little bit differently. So I would think my, my I guess that's my, it's not that bold of a prediction, but I think we're going to see a big shift in um, what the schedule looks like. And I, and I think we're going to see, um, I don't think we're going to see any new tracks. We know what the new tracks are, but um, that that would be my my prediction. We're going to have like a maybe a Midwest swing. Maybe we go to Michigan and Chicago in the same vicinity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's interesting. Interesting take. Uh, my expectation is we're going to lose a Kansas State. We're going to lose a Richmond date. Um, yeah. The question is, is where do those dates go? So they're both yeah, ISC that's... tracks or, or former ISC tracks. They're both NASCAR tracks. So where are they going to go? Um, right. You, you're not going to add second dates anywhere. Uh, the most likely right. second date added would be Michigan, but I, that makes no sense because it was so, so yeah, successful was so with one date. Um, yeah. So, James, my prediction is that we go to Iowa next year. Um, yeah, I love that. I don't know where the other date would go. Like I said, I, I would love to see Kentucky come back, but I don't think they're going to put a NASCAR track at an SMI track. Yeah. Unless yep. it's something to do with the deal with the all-star race or whatever. Um, yep. Texas only gets one date still, but we, you guys go back to Kentucky. I don't know. We'll see how that goes, but I don't know where they would put the other date. We know road America is not coming back next year. Um, yep. and like I said, I can't think of any, the only tracks that I could think of getting a second date already have them, you know, Darlington, Daytona, Talladega. Um, yep. so it's, it's really tough to think of somewhere unless they give another one to, I can't imagine they give another one to California again, because it's, it's unless they, Unless they come up with a way to, to run on the old track in the spring and rip it up and run on the new track in the fall, maybe. Yeah, but that's I, that's a big project, right? Eric. That's, that's the a thing. Really it's, big project. Exactly. I would think that that's that's that type of project is like a, we don't race there next year because we're still working on it type of thing. I, I think that's a you race in the spring one year, you race in the fall the next. Yeah. At, at best. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I I love your Iowa pick because that I think that's I just think logical. IndyCar proved that Iowa can work with with how yeah. successful it was with the IndyCar race. You put Cup cars yeah. there, I think that's a big win. Yeah, I think it's logical, um, especially with the with the races that have been pulled out of the Midwest lately. Yeah. I think adding one back in might be a, a good thing. Yeah, so, and I'd love Absolutely. to see I, Iowa. I I'm, opt- I'm opt- optimistic about Iowa because it's it's similar to Richmond, but it's kind of a it's it's kind of a hybrid between Richmond and a mile and a half. Cause it's bigger than Richmond, yeah. but it's the same type of shape as Richmond. So maybe with this new car, yep. it would race good. Unlike Richmond. So, and, yep. and you could take a Richmond date away and put it at Iowa. Kind of, you're kind of having the same track in different parts of the country. So it, yep. it makes sense, but we'll Is see any chance we see Portland come to the cup schedule. Maybe that's the other date. Maybe Possibly. that's the other, the other NASCAR date. I, I wonder if we have some sort of a West coast swing where it's like, Portland, Sonoma, yeah, Auto Club. I, I man, these these teams are traveling a lot. <laughs> you know, we're you know I mean, on I a weekly basis. I don't know if Portland is ready for a cup date. 
I mean, they host the IndyCar series. So. Yeah, but that you're talking. I mean, oh, I know. It, oh, hosting I know. the IndyCar series is hosting hosting Xfinity series. I mean, that's yeah. that's your similarity. And they already host yep. the Xfinity series and didn't yep. host it very well, from my understanding. So yeah, maybe Laguna Seca sneaks out. We haven't, Eric. We haven't heard any sort no. of rumbling that any of that's possible. No. But I, I will say. You know, we don't have to hear rumblings to know that Iowa could work because it, it's a it's a plug and play right racetrack. So yeah, I mean the other option is another return of the Daytona Road Course. You know, possibly. I think yeah, I don't know if we're doing that. Anymore. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. I think that's a that's an emergency option. But yep, I it'll would be like to see the playoffs shaken up a little bit. Yeah, me too. Although I like I like a lot of what we have in the playoffs. Like leave Darlington and uh, Bristol alone. Um, Talladega as a as a uh, Last chance race was always fun. I know it's yeah. kind of... I don't know, think you can do don't... Talladega as a last chance race with Daytona as a, as a closer. I know. It's tough. Yeah. It's definitely I'd tough. almost rather put Talladega as the closer. Yep. Because you don't have to worry about weather as much there as Daytona. Yep. Here's another idea. Um, just throwing it out there. Again, this is just an idea. This is this is me. I don't think this will happen, but an idea. Uh, we know that Formula One is coming back to Miami. Yeah. Uh, and Las Vegas is looming. Could we see the Cup Series piggyback off F1, possibly? Maybe. And run one of those street courses. No, nah, nah, I don't think that's happening next year. We would have heard rumblings about that. Yeah, I think um, I think NASCAR is going to do everything they can possible to not overshadow the Chicago street Chicago. course. Exactly. I agree 100%. So. 100%. But that being said, like... You know, there's a possibility down the road, maybe 2024. Yeah. You know, well, hey, we have something like Chicago's that. Chicago's successful. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be all kinds of ideas for street courses. Yep. I mean, and, we, we and already NASCAR Indy loves Car, Las Vegas. Any car already runs a bunch of street courses. Yeah, and you got the two Formula One courses. There's certainly options to yep. run street courses if Chicago's successful. So. Right, right, and and if you take an oval away from Las Vegas, and you've got a street course possibility there. I mean, again, that's another down the road thing. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It'll be fun I'm to watch, fun to see. Um, interested to see with how long it took this, to put the schedule together. I expect something uh, surprising out of it, yeah. um, but just not much for rumblings. And even, I mean, even now the night before the announcement, um, I mean, I think, I think that, uh, that Kyle kind of took some of the wind out of it and people aren't as interested, but I don't know, man, well, it, it, I am. <laughs> it feels like, uh, it feels like there should be more discussion if there was something big happening. So, I don't know. We'll yep. see. Yep, for sure. Yep. Uh, only other news item I mentioned hinted at Jeremy Clements. Uh, they appealed their penalty, which I don't think we talked about the penalty on the podcast at all. Um, that th- they they won it at Talladega or Daytona, and they were they were penalized. They were allowed to keep the win, but uh, not allowed to use it as eligibility for the playoffs. So they were out of the playoffs, and now they're back in. They're in the sixteenth seed or whatever. No, not sixteenth seed. They're in. Yeah. yeah, they're in. Whatever seat they're in. They're in but the they're playoffs, in. Yeah. Um, which makes uh, Bristol a little bit more interesting as the season wraps up for the Xfinity Series. Regular yep. season wraps up for the Xfinity Eric, Series. Eric, do you remember a, a penalty like this being overturned? I I can't remember one. <sighs> Not in a long I, time. I was struggling to think of one. There was yeah. a time when penalties were getting overturned a lot, uh, but that was quite a long time ago. That was well before this podcast. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, and not since we've had the new rules in place either. No, we haven't had it. So no, so good on them. Obviously, anyway. whatever they. Uh, I didn't read the the notes on it. I don't know if they're, they've even been released. Um, but good on them. Do you think too. there was a? Do you think there was a, a a bumping of elbows being like, come on, let Clemens have it. <laughs> I don't know. Just leave him alone. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, it's a better story this way. That's for sure. Yeah, leave him alone. That's yeah. what I think. Let him have it. Okay, so. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I mean, I don't care how they came to it, came to a conclusion, but just let them have it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, do we, we, we've got the note in here about KBM and, and what comes next. Do we want to talk about that? Is if we, if we beat the K- KBF? I think we, I think we covered it. Okay. I think we know like it's, yeah. it's going to be Chevrolet and, and we don't know about the drivers just yet, but I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to have, I'd assume we're going to get a, get a Ty Gibbs announcement pretty soon. Uh, within the next week, I would venture to guess. You would think, yeah, it's it's got to be it's got to be soon. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, it's time to do our picks, James. Uh, oh, you boy. you pulled away on me a little bit this week. Um, let me find it in my the 
the biggest week of the season 140 total points yeah yeah you, uh, you had one you had a good week though but you you had kyle bush on sunday which um which hurt i had the the race winner bubba wallace so that was our that was our difference but you had a good week regardless yeah um, you only got me by 37 points i mean that's yeah. that's pretty good um 53 total on the season yeah 53 point lead going into bristol and uh that means i get to pick first again this week uh, all three series in action. The truck series kicked things off Thursday night with the UNOH 200. And uh, so I'm James. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a limb here and yeah. I'm going to go with the only current driver with a recent win and the last winner at Dang Bristol. It. And I'm going to go Chandler Smith as my pick for this one. Picked him again. I was going to take him. I, th- I, th- I thought you might leave him for me. Yeah. Um, oh, that's fine. That's fine, Eric. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, I am going to go with someone who I think might be hungry to get it here. Give okay. me Carson Hosevar. He's go. got nothing to lose. Go win. Go win one. That's a good I'm pick. Gonna kick my, I'm going to pick, kick myself for not taking John Hunter Neiman check probably. But right. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series. It's the Food City 300 on Friday night. And my driver has one win here. Uh, he's got the most experience here, James, with 21 races ran here. I think that probably tells you who it is right now. Uh, ran well last that. year. He was in the three-way battle for the win. Give me Justin Allgaier as my pick. Oh, nice work there. So, Mr. Justin Allgaier for you. Um, I would have taken AJ Allmendinger here. I am not allowed to. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the other reason um, I went with Allgaier because I, I thought about Allmendinger. But yeah. just because he won I, last I, year, there's not as much on the line this year. I know it. I know it. Um, I am going to go. Oh, boy. I haven't picked this guy in a while. Uh, give me Ty Gibbs. Give me Ty Gibbs. I'm worried about my truck series pick a little bit, so I'm going to try to make up for it here. Um, and I, I, man, I don't know about Noah Gregson at Bristol. So Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable God, with Noah so. there, too. And he's just winning like crazy, so I, you know, I guess I can't go wrong with him, but. I am really struggling with my cup pick because I have three. This is tough. I have and, three. And, and Eric, I don't, I don't know what to expect with this race. There, there's a lot of talk that they're going to be stuck on the top, and there's not going to be a whole lot of passing opportunities. I, I don't know. Are we going to be shifting? I hope not. In the cup series, I hope not. So here's here's where I'm going to go. Can with you this. imagine? So Man, I'm going to go God. with I'm going to go with my first pick. Um, this is a gut instinct type of pick instead. Uh, so yeah. Tyler Reddick said earlier this week, uh, he was asked about this race. So a lot of drivers were asked about this race. Most of them said they expect it to be wild. They expect it to be crazy. Tyler Reddick said, no, it's going to be calm. And the only way you're going to be able to get, the only way you're going to be able to pass here is to pull the Joey Logano move. I agree. Whoa. Joey Logano. That's my pick. <laughs> <laughs> I like that pick. I like Two that wins pick. here. Yep. Can't go wrong with Joey at, at, uh, at Bristol, you know he's gonna—he's not gonna be afraid my, to lay the bumper to somebody. So, my my heart wants to go with Kevin Harvick. Yeah. Um. <laughs> however, points don't matter to Kevin Harvick. He's going to go for broke for a win. Um. So he's you know he does not caring about the stages. He's gonna try to set this race up. That's true. Um. I'm gonna go with somebody where points do matter, and he has to have a good day, and and get through. And he's been in the news a little bit recently. Give me uh, give me the best guy at Bristol. Give me Kyle Busch. He's Go gonna have to have a solid day. He's gonna have to have a solid day to get through. And and honestly, he's just gotta go out and have two good stages, and he's gonna be in good shape. Yeah. So if I, if I can get a guaranteed twenty ish points from him out of those stages and and see how the rest falls, I'll I'll take that I'll take that bet. The only thing that worries me with Kyle is Kyle never finishes fifth at Bristol. Kyle That's right. Kyle always dominates or yep. wrecks. <laughs> yep. There's no in between for him. Yeah, I just hope I just he just needs to have a clean run. Um, now I feel like I'm taking a risk too because Joe Gibbs Racing could be like, well, screw that guy, he's right. leaving. So I, it's this is this is a tough this is a tough spot. Well, let me but. tell you who my other two picks were, and and I really very cl- very much almost went with the second one, but I was afraid I'm being influenced too much by recent success. Um, Bubba Wallace only only has one top ten here, uh, seven starts. He's but he's, he's run hard. really really well here. He's on fire. Yeah, and so that's he's a good pick. And the other one who who has the best average finish here, James, uh, five top tens, four of those were top fives, just nine races. Eric Jones is really good. Yeah, here. he's good here. So both yep, those were tempting, here. but I I feel like Joey Logano is gonna 
anytime I, I, Joey's my guy to go back to when, when things are uncertain, yeah. you know, can, so. can we go back to our old school format for just a second and mention why, why can't chase Briscoe or Brad Keselowski run really good here on a short track? Yeah. Am I, am I, Am I way out in left field and thinking that those guys are going to have a good day? It's so hard. I mean, I'm I'm so thrown by this car because we just don't know what to expect with this car. If it was yeah. if it was the old car here, it'd be a lot easier to make this pick. But I mean, we don't we don't nothing. I mean, this is the most this uncertain is our first race we've here. been. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we, we can't count the dirt race. It's no. not, it's not the and same it, thing. And it's yeah, not even know. like, it's not just our first race here, but it's not like, not like when you go to go to Las Vegas for the first time and you're like, well, it's like Kansas. No, this is not yeah. like anything. Yep. Dover maybe, but not really. Yep. No. So I don't um, know. Do we think Ross Chastain makes it out of there at this point? <sighs> yeah. We haven't, we I haven't think, revisited that kerfuffle. In I a think while. if he's in contention, and somebody is around him that has the opportunity to punt him. I think he's going to get raced hard. <laughs> he's going to get used up in Mr. this one. Mr. James. Hamlin's got good points right now. Yeah. He's in good shape. Yeah. But um, Denny can't also can't afford to get himself suspended. <laughs> true. So that's true. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Kevin Harvick don't care. <laughs> no, that's the thing is if you're going to do it, you, you got to do it right. It, th- this would count. I mean, this would count oh, big yeah. for Ross. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I don't think anybody, I, I think nobody's going to cut him any, any slack. Nobody's going to give him any favors. I don't think people are going to seek him out. Now we've also got Chris Bell and Daniel Suarez. Uh, yeah. The other, the other, the other looming fight. Yeah. Suarez (laughs) doesn't seem like he's backing down on that whole deal. He's mad. He's legit mad. Yeah. Now I, I like Daniel a lot, but when he gets mad, he usually, it it doesn't work out well for him. Um, I mean, he went, he tried to go mano a mano with Michael McDowell, right? That, uh, <laughs> that didn't go so well. <laughs> so I hope there's some people pissed off at each other. I want to see oh, fights. Man. I want to see old Bristol. I want, I want Kevin Harvick slamming his helmet on top of the car again. I mean, that was, that was just so much fun. I want chaos. Lots of chaos. That chaos is good. <sighs> Speaking of chaos, chaos James. How did fantasy oh boy. go this week? <laughs> well, you know, it wasn't chaotic, I guess. <laughs> Baron Speedway is on a mission right now. Yeah, he is. Uh, he wins again, and no doubt about it. Two we- two weeks in a row, he's he's had no doubt about. It. So he's he's doing the Tony Stewart twenty eleven thing where he's just out. He's just gonna he's just gonna try to sweep the playoffs. Yeah. So he he gets the win two thirty five. Our buddy Ranger. Back in the back on the podium, number two, he uh, finishes two with two eighteen. I was third, two oh five. So I'm I'm hanging on to the points lead. So that gives us an overall. Uh, I am overall keeping snapshot. the middle am, to tail end of the field nice and warm. You I, are. I've doing so settled good. into seventh place, man. Every week, Eric. I I don't know if this is foreshadowing, <laughs> but your team name is the KB Show. Yeah. Uh, you know what position you're in in the points? What position am I in the points? You're number eight in the point oh, standings interesting. with the KB show. Yeah. yeah. Out, of, out of 10. Uh-huh. Sweet. Well, yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> well, what you a, got Kyle's new number. You got his name. Terrible, See? terrible season. It's been a terrible season. Now I'm in the fight of my life. Um, I'm still first green eggs and Hamlin second and Ranger up to third uh, Ranger lurking. Uh, he's in the sp- spot I was in a year ago trying to chase down the leader. Um, so I'm, I'm worried a little bit. However, we're not we're not there yet. We've we've got a little bit of a gap here, but I gotta I gotta put some points in between these guys before Taldega. I I gotta do something. So we'll see what happens. There you go. Uh, before we jump out, I forgot one news item that I wanted to mention. Uh, Dale Jr. Yeah. took over the JRM Twitter account today, uh, uh. and and used emojis to announce that they're going to be making an announcement soon for the nine car. Um. James, you and I have heard some rumblings. I'm not going to say who it is, uh, but we heard some rumblings as to who potentially could be taking over that ride. Uh, I think it's pretty, yep. pretty underwhelming if that ends up being the case. I think people are going to be pretty yeah. disappointed uh, with that decision. Yep. But barring what we know, any any thoughts, predictions, whatnot of the uh, of the nine car? <laughs> should I say we should all be underwhelmed? Yeah, <laughs> if, I think that's if what the case. we think hap- was going to happen. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, we don't know for sure, but we've heard some rumblings. 
and, and know, nobody's I, talking about where... it. Nobody's even mentioning this driver. No, I know. And this, who would, this let's, is where... Let's do this instead. Who would you like to see in that car? Who do you think, if you were Dale Earnhardt Jr., if you were Kelly Earnhardt, um, who would you select right now to put in that car? I think it's in their nature to go get like a John Hunter Nemechek for that spot. Yeah. Which could be a good fit, honestly. Um, yeah, John they, Hunter they would like be a, younger guys with experience. John Hunter would be a good pickup. Uh, that would be a good one. My my personal, per, if I if it was me personally, just as a fan, Carson Hosevar would yeah. be the one I would love to see in that seat. But that's just not in the cards for Carson just yet. He's he's, he's been the strong his dues just a little bit more. He's been the strong rumor, but from what we're hearing, that's not who it's going to be. Another fun one. It won't. It won't happen. But just to rattle people up a little bit, uh, Haley Deegan would be a fun oh, one. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> oh, people I'm would be so, so mad. <laughs> bummed with Haley, man. Ryan Priest comes in and just kicks butt in that DGR yeah. truck every every time he runs. And Haley, man, just stuck in the middle of the field. I want her to do so much more. Yep. <sighs> yep. I know. I know. But she's got another year. I think she she's got one more year. So let's see. I don't know. Yeah. He, she's just really struggling. She's not, she's stalled. She's stalled. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm trying to think here who else would I want. I mean, right now, shoot, J, JRM's got the good drivers like in the Xfinity yeah. series. Yeah. So like, I'm not, I mean, maybe you, you try and you go to the, to the truck series and, and try and get somebody like a, like a Ben Rhodes, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Ben might have some potential. Ty Majeski, yep. I mean, he's a Ford guy. Uh, no, I guess he's running Toyota right now, so he's not a Ford guy. Um, yep. Maybe Ty Majeski be an option. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, I mean, I, it's tough. Yeah. Zane Smith is a good pickup for somebody. Um, and we didn't mention the person that we think is getting it. Yeah, we haven't you mentioned. Will the let, we'll let everybody else figure that yeah. out. Yeah. The, let's put it this way: the person who uh, who we think is getting in uh, would not be one of my picks to put in this yeah ride. no kidding and it's yeah. a current xfinity series driver i'll just leave it at that so yeah there you go good we'll, work good let's we'll, go let's we'll get see what we'll see what happens uh james you got any shout outs this week um yeah there's a new instagram account from somebody local um here in our area eric okay um i i stumbled on this guy because he, he's kind of like me he loves auto racing nascar and, and he's a long distance runner so <laughs> um but his instagram account is hard nascar picks and uh, and it's NASCAR picks that go hard, and every day he posts NASCAR picks that go hard. So, um, am I too I'm, old to understand what that means? I I am as well, but they're just like they, <laughs> good you, picks. When you see like cool, when picks? you see the account, yeah, when you see the account, yeah, okay. these picks go hard. So, okay. yeah. So I'm gonna shout out a local guy who's uh, trying to trying to do something. So, awesome. There cool. you go. Did you say what the account? Oh yeah, you did say what the account was. Yep, okay. NASCAR. Yep, hard NASCAR picks on Instagram or NASCAR picks that go hard. There you go. I don't really have a good shout out or, or a shout out plan, so I'll just go with the the easy one. Uh, and once again, shout out Jordan Bianchi for getting the scoop on the KBM news. Uh, JD McMurray took a shot at him, uh, saying that he wishes that people would wait or let these teams and make their announcements. Um, to Jamie, I say that's not how journalism works. Sorry, Jamie. Um, but our job as journalists is to to dig and, and report that information when we get it. And yep. if you, if you get rid of the independent press, you get rid of everything. And th so many things go unchecked then without the media reporting on things. Um, I get it. It sucks to have your announcement ruined. That's why Denny Hamlin did what he did with Tyler Reddick earlier this year. Um, but that's just part of the game. And, and again, that's why I'm surprised we haven't seen anything on the, on the cup series schedule. Um, because stuff comes out, we knew we knew about the All Star race before. I mean, I think it was Jim Utter that broke that one. Yep. Um. So, but these guys are doing their jobs. That's what they're supposed to do. So, uh, Jamie, just uh, continue being a old former driver and commentator on TV, and let the journalists do their <laughs> job. So there you go. Good work. Uh, Jackass Corner, James. I got a jackass uh, for you. I am going to give the award, despite the fact that I love their coverage. I'm going to give the award to NBC this week. Uh, and my reasoning for this is that for many of us who like to time shift and record races and watch them later, and who had to choose this weekend between the Cup race and the IndyCar race, who which happened to be on at the same freaking time, uh, maybe don't 
stop in the middle of the truck, the, or the cup race and say, we're going to give you highlights for the, for the IndyCar race, blah, 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 blah. And not even give you a chance to shut the thing off yeah. to not know who won the championship and who won the IndyCar race. So yep. NBC gets it for giving, for, for spoiling the IndyCar race for me. And guess what, NBC? I didn't watch the damn thing because I already knew what happened. So yep. there you go. Beautiful. And congratulations, Will Power, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, mine, I'll go after the other network. We already talked about it. Fox. <laughs> I was so I was so baffled by the whole thing. And and I shouldn't be. I should expect Yeah, it, I don't so. it didn't even get right, me riled up. Like, even after I watched it, after seeing your comment, I'm like, I don't even notice anything that's bad because it's just yep. bad every week. Yep. I it's... did notice when they came back from commercial with three laps to go in the stage. Shout out to Denny Hamlin for doing his his due diligence and pointing some of this out. Yeah, by the way, so good work. We need more Denny Hamlins and Kevin Harvicks, man. Yes, love yeah, it. Yeah, I like Soapbox Harvick. He's it was it right was now. nice that that Kevin Harvick was able to find his Twitter password this week. That was kind of cool. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, James, if people want to tweet at you during the week, how can they do that? Uh, at James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. Um, it's not my personal account, but it's become my personal account. So pretty much chances are you're going to get me there if you're going to find me on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, our website, or our, our podcast is on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Super Speedway. See what happens when I go off script, James? It screws everything yep. up. I know. You tried. Our website is the Super Speedway.com. You can find old episodes of the podcast, show notes, links to articles we discuss, past race coverage, photos, and much, much more. You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. We hope you subscribe for new episodes each week. Uh, James, we go back to Bristol Motor Speedway this weekend. It is Bristol week. Uh, ready to end the regular season for the Xfinity Series. Ready to seal the deal on round number one for the Cup Series. Ready to get some tempers hurt and some, I don't know, get some people flustered. Throw, throw some chaos into things. Uh, and give us some excitement. The Bristol Night Race this weekend. We'll be back next week to break it all down and preview the next round of the Cup Series playoffs. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Uh-huh.